In this video, we're diving into a topic that's often misunderstood but incredibly important, God's purpose for sex. Stick around because we're about to uncover some surprising truths that you may not have heard before. And trust me, it's going to be more interesting than you might think. Yes, we're talking about sex in the Bible, two words you hardly hear in the same sentence. First off, let's get one thing clear. Sex is a blessing from God. Yes, you heard me right. God created sex and it's meant to be enjoyed. When God made Adam and Eve, he didn't just create them to work and worship. He created them to experience pleasure and intimacy too. In Genesis 2.24 we read, Therefore a man will leave his father and his mother, and will join with his wife, and they will be one flesh. This one flesh union is emotional, spiritual, and yes, physical. And if you think God made this all serious and somber, think again. He created it to be a joyful and fulfilling experience. Did you know the Bible has an entire book dedicated to the beauty of marital love and sexual intimacy? That's right. The Song of Solomon is a poetic celebration of love between a husband and wife. Listen to this verse from Song of Solomon 7, 6, 9. How beautiful and how pleasant you are, love, for delights. This, your stature, is like a palm tree, your breasts like its fruit. I said, I will climb up into the palm tree. I will take hold of its fruit. Let your breasts be like clusters of the vine the smell of your breath like apples, your mouth like the best wine that goes down smoothly for my beloved, gliding through the lips of those who are asleep. This isn't shy language. It's passionate, it's descriptive, and it's a clear indication that sexual desire and enjoyment within marriage is something God celebrates. I mean, if the Bible were a movie, Song of Solomon wouldn't even be rated PG-13. Now let's talk about boundaries. God designed sex to be enjoyed within the context of marriage, between a husband and a wife. I know that these days that sounds radical. Hebrews 13, 4 says, Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the bed be undefiled, but God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. This isn't meant to scare us, but to guide us. It's like a GPS for our love lives, keeping us on the right path and away from the traffic jams of heartache and regret. Take King David, for example. His adultery with Bathsheba led to devastating consequences, not just for him, but for his entire family. What started as a moment of pleasure ended in pain and sorrow. It's a classic example of how one bad decision can snowball into a full-blown disaster. Let's keep our love lives out of the tabloids, shall we? So what does God want for our relationships? He wants us to enjoy them in a way that glorifies Him and brings us closer to each other. Ephesians 5 31, 32 echoes Genesis saying, For this cause a man will leave his father and mother and will be joined to his wife. The two will become one flesh. This mystery is great, but I speak concerning Christ and the assembly. God's design for marriage reflects His relationship with us. Just as a husband and wife are to be united and intimate, so too are we to be in a deep, intimate relationship with God. Think of it as the ultimate love story, one that's meant to inspire all our relationships here on earth. The Bible often uses the metaphor of marriage to describe God's relationship with His people. The intimacy and fidelity expected in marriage reflect the relationship God wants with us. In Revelation 19, 7, 9, the relationship between Christ and the church is depicted as a wedding feast. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad and let's give the glory to him. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. It was given to her that she would array herself in bright, pure, fine linen. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. He said to me, Right, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Embracing God's purpose for sex means embracing both joy and responsibility. It means understanding that sex is not just about physical pleasure, but about building a deeper bond with our spouse. Proverbs 5, 18, 19 says, Let your spring be blessed. Rejoice in the wife of your youth, a loving doe and a graceful deer. Let her breasts satisfy you at all times. Be captivated always with her love. So if you've been married for a while, remember to keep the romance alive. Date nights aren't just for the young and newly married. Just as God designed sex to be a source of joy within marriage, He designed our relationship with Him to be one of joy and fulfillment. Psalm 1611 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. In your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. God wants us to experience the fullness of joy in His presence. It's like having your cake and eating it too. Spiritually speaking, of course. I want to encourage each of us to draw closer to Jesus. If you're married, Cherish and honor the gift of sexual intimacy within your marriage. See it as a reflection of God's love and a way to glorify Him. If you're single, honor God with your body and your relationships, knowing that His plans for you are good. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, 
We thank you for the gift of sex and the joy it brings within the boundaries you have set. Help us to honor this gift and use it to strengthen our marriages and glorify you. Draw us closer to you that we may experience the fullness of joy in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more uplifting word. See you in the next video.